chapter four introduced you to the first part of the basic verb, that is the singular forms. In chapter five, Dobson goes on to round this out by giving you the plural forms. To recap, you met the verb lego. And when you look up a verb in a Greek dictionary, this is the form you'll find. I say, and this is the first person, singular, When you look up a verb in an English dictionary, it's going to say to say, because in English we use infinitives for this part, but a Greek verb is going to be this first person singular ending in omega that you see in the dictionary when you look it up. Lego, legis, legi. I say, you say, he, she, it says. But I said I was going to use luo to teach you with most of the time. The same endings apply. Luo, luace, lue. So if you know those, then you know your basic singular verb endings. Now we need to add in the plural ones. Legomen, legeta. Legusi. The same building block approach works. You take your stem and you add the morpheme that is the ending. There is one variation, which is there are two possible endings for the, the last one. There's what we call a movable new, which is there sometimes and not other times. Technically, it ought to be there if the next word begins with a vowel so that you have a nice consistent consonant vowel, consonant vowel pattern. But in reality, You'll sometimes see it, sometimes not, and you just need to get used to it. It occurs in a couple of parts of the verb and will be something you get used to seeing. So these are now plural. First, second and third person. Translated, we say, you say, they say. And exactly the same pattern holds for Luo. Note that we don't have anything like a polite form. There isn't a special you polite form as you might find in some other European languages. You've just got first, second, third person, singular and plural. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. Dobson then goes on to talk to you a little bit about simple and continuous verbs. What is going on here? What is going on about here? is the difference between tense and aspect. Greek is a very aspectual language. What do we mean by this? Well, for tense, you have things like present or future. These are the time spheres in which something happens. Aspect is going to be something like simple or continuous. This tells you how something happens how bounded it is, how unbounded it is, and will also later on apply to things to do with defaultness. This is something that is still a research topic in Greek. You'll also see words like axion sart applied to this, because aspect, axion sart, time frames are a research topic in exactly how Greek conceives of when and how things happen. What is clear is this notion of aspect, whatever it's going to end up looking like, is very important. And this difference between simple and continuous is, is going to be key. Simple, I say. Continuous, I am saying. English has a simple present and a continuous present. English has a lot of different tense forms. 
Greek has fewer tense forms and each is either simple or continuous in its default underlying idea. The Greek present has a default idea of being continuous. The English present to most people probably fits under the simple. You'd be more likely to say I say than I am saying. So you do need to be aware of the fact that Greek is continuous in the present as its underlying idea for most purposes. And this is one reason why Dobson is very likely to say I am doing, I am saying, etc. in his translations, because he's expressing the idea that Greek likes an aspectual difference. He chooses to demarcate this using a series of little symbols. He uses a line for continuous and he uses dots to be repeated actions. And he's going to introduce other kinds of signs throughout the book. Personally, I find these quite confusing, and particularly given that this concept of aspect is still under discussion, I don't find it particularly helpful to try and codify it in these ways. So I'm going to ignore all of these from now on. Erase. If you find them useful, great. But what I want you to just be thinking about is that time spheres are as important. But what I want you to be thinking about is how something happens is as important to Greek as exactly when it happens. So, to summarise, your endings, you or, you ace, you a, you omen, you eta, you usin. This is what we call the present active indicative. Present is your tense. It tells you when something happens. Active is the voice and gives you an idea about who's performing the action. And indicative is the mood, which tells you something about the kind of function the verb's performing. In this case, indicative just means normal and will contrast with other moods that we meet later on. You've then got a person, first, second, third, first, second, third, and a number, singular, and plural. So grammatically, we talk about verbs having Tense, voice, mood, person, and number. Start getting used to all these different categories and we will fill in all the possibilities there as we continue to move through the course. I should add in a translation for these just to make sure everyone is happy. I untie, you untie, he unties. We untie, you untie, they untie. Do contact me if you have any questions about this and otherwise we will work through more of the exercises together.